First Samuel 7 and verse 3. So we gotta, I'm, I'm trying to just show you the theme of how we got our leadership and why it got to the point why we asked for a king. There was a theme here. Reads 1 Samuel 7 verse 3. Sorry about the interruption. Um, we're back up. So um, we'll try to, we'll just continue on from where we're at. Go ahead. 1 Samuel. Chapter 7 and verse 3. Uh huh. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, uh -huh. saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, uh -huh. then put away the strange gods right. of Ashtaroth right. from among you. Because what do we always do? We always chase the nation's gods. Mm -hmm. We always envy our oppressor and chose his ways. We always env envy the sinful men. This is why the Most High was like, Listen, I'm going to give you a leader. Because if you left it up to us, we would have damn voted for the Moabite king. We would have voted for the for the Philistine king if you yeah. left it up to us. Because yeah. we wanted to be like them so bad. But how can we how can we live? We would have chose death for the most high made it easy. We'll give you all these prophets, all these judges, they're gonna be righteous. They're gonna do the right thing. Go ahead. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And serve him only. Read. And he will deliver you out of the hand of of the Philistines. Jump to verse 15. Verse 15. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. Go ahead. And he went from year to year uh -huh. in circuit uh -huh. to Bethel. Go ahead. And Gilgad. Uh -huh. And Mith Mith Mithpel. Mizpah. Mizpah. Uh -huh. And judged Israel in all those places. All right, so he, Samuel was his whole life, he just went city to city. What was he doing? He was praying to the most high for the people. Setting up sacrifice and judging matters. You see that? He did that for his life. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel 8 and verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. Lock around. Read this for me. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Because we're going to read the whole chapter, or most of it. Go ahead. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1. Uh huh. And it came to pass when Samuel was old. That he made his sons judges over Israel. So you see that Samuel was over. He made his sons judges over Israel. Go ahead. Verse 2. Now the name of his firstborn of his firstborn was Joel. Uh-huh. And the name of his second, Abiyah. Read. They were judges in Beersheba. Now, see, you see what happened here? Samuel chose the judges, right? But check this out. Read verse 3. And his sons walked not. In his ways. He said what? Walked not in his ways. Go ahead. But turned aside after lucre. Uh-huh. And, and took bribes. Uh-huh. And perverted judgment. You see what happens when we choose? We don't choose a right. Now, not, not always. I'm not saying that every time we choose, it's like we're, off, we're just off and wrong. But the theme was that the Most High gave us the leadership. Go ahead. Read verse 4. Verse 4. Then all, the, then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together uh -huh. and came to Samuel unto Ramah Go ahead. and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, Go ahead. and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Read. Now make us a king. Now, to, do, now do what? Make us a king uh -huh. to judge us uh -huh. like all the nations. You see that? Envy not thou oppressor, and choose not his ways. They went to Samuel like, first of all, you're old, washed up and done. Your sons are wicked. Make us a king. What do we do every time before? It said the children of Israel cried to the Most High. God. And he did what? He sent a deliverer. God. We went and said, listen, man, give us a king. God. Make us a god. Like, what do we do in the wilderness? When Moses went up on Sinai and we ran to Aaron like, make us a god because we don't know what's up with Moses. Make us a God that we can worship. What does what Aaron come up with? A, a damn calf. golden calf, an idol, right? Yeah. He don't come up with nothing spiritual being the priest. He comes up with a golden calf. Think about it. Think about the mind that we were supposed to be in, but we don't have. Who had their hand up? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, like you were saying earlier, like we never make the right choices. We don't. And I was thinking about, like, even Samuel. Was it Samuel? But uh, I was thinking back when David was crowned king. Uh huh. Like, his brother walked up and they were like, 
Oh yeah, this is the king. This is the king, yeah. But like Sam was like, nah, this is a him. Right. Don't look at the stature. And in the scripture after that, I believe it said that the most high looks at the man's heart. That was Saul. Oh, that was Saul. That was dealing with Saul, yeah. I thought it I thought it did the same it, thing. It did the same it, thing with David, David also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. David, it was both though. They looked at Saul like yeah. well, no, 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 no. You're right. It was, it was David. David. It was David's David. brothers. It was David and his brother. Saul was a different. Saul was a different instance that we're going to hit too. No, you're absolutely right. That's my apology. Yeah, because they looked at David like he's just a child. Yeah, we just look at. The, we, it's like we just we, we look at the carnal things. Uh huh. And we don't ever look at the the spirit. But like even with that, like the Most High, like can look even farther into a man's spirit than we ever can. Yeah, and he can say, okay, I'm going to point this man to do to give you that expected end, to give you that peace and prosperity. But the one thing we got to understand, though, is when we said, make us a king, did, did the Most High send us somebody? He sent us Saul. He sent us David. No, he did. He sent us Saul. He sent us David. He sent us all the other kings after. But there were flaws in these men. There were, as in all men. But there were things about these men that it was like, whoa, that's what you chose? That's what you wanted? Because we wanted to be like our oppressor. Read verse, read verse 5. Verse 5. And said unto him, uh -huh. Behold, thou art old. Read verse 6. Verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. Right. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. Right. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. Yeah, if they want it, we're going to give it to them. They ask him for it because they don't know what they have. Go ahead. For they have not rejected thee. Read. But they have rejected me. You see that? Because we already had a king. Wow. We already had a king. Read. That I should not reign over them. Right. Go ahead. Up oh, verse 8. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out. Up out of Egypt, uh -huh. even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me, right, and served other gods. Read. So do they also unto thee. Go ahead. Now therefore hearken unto their voice. Howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that they that shall reign over them. He said, Do what? And show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Right. What verse are you at? That was the end of verse 9. Right. So he said, show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. So he said, show, show them what, they, what they're what asking for. Give it to them plain. So go ahead and read on. This verse 10. We, this is what we were asking for. Go ahead. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. Uh -huh. And he said... This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. Check this out. He will take your sons. Now did the Most High take our sons? Nah. Uh -huh. we, we, we had the priesthood, we had the armies, but you had your sons. Go ahead. And appoint them for himself. Yeah, he's going to use them for his benefit, whatever he wants, because he's the king. Go ahead. For his chariot. For his what? For his chariots. Yeah, because they're no longer the nation's chariots when the king is in play. That's his horses. All the king's horses and all the king's men. Everything is mine. Go ahead. And to be his horsemen. And to be his what? His horsemen. Come on. And some shall run before his chariots. Now, think about America. You have your little son. He hits 18. And then what does he do? He goes signs up for their military, right? Right. Now, obviously, it's not mandatory. But what happens when he instill that draft? And it's, and it's part of something that you voted for. What happens then? When now your sons become the king's sons to run on their chariots and fly their planes and live on their damn boats and submarines. They had a draft way back when. I mean, I, I hope y'all don't forget. They were talking about doing a draft back in Desert Storm. They were talking about doing a draft for uh, 2011, uh, 9-11. So don't think that it's far-fetched. Let something pop off. You think they're going to draft your sons and then say, well, it's according to the Constitution? It's according to what you voted for? Yep. This is the king that you got. Go ahead, read on. Verse 12. 
and he will appoint him captains uh -huh. over thousands uh -huh. and captains over fifties Read. and will set them to ear his ground. To do what? To ear his ground. Go ahead. And to reap his harvest. Yeah, he's going to make them farmers. He's going to make them captains of thousands and hundreds, but they're going to be farmers. They're going to do whatever he wants, even if it has nothing to do with war. When you go and when you look at uh, the Chinese military, the Chinese military, man, half them dudes are farmers. They make them farm the land. You got to look it up. Uh, it's either Chinese or Korea. They got so many men in the military, they're like, yeah, you're going to go help the farmers. That's what they do. <laughs> this is what we ask for, though. Go ahead, read on. And to make his instruments of war. Uh-huh. And instruments of, of his chariots. Go ahead. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries. Look up that word confectionaries. Go ahead. And to be cooks. Uh-huh. And to be bakers. So he's going to take your daughters. He's going to take your help. And they're going to be living in the king's quarters. They're going to do his bidding. Who got that word confectionaries? Read on while they find that. Verse 14. And he will take your fields. He will do what? Take your fields. Yes, yeah, eminent domain. Eminent domain. When does the Most High ever came and said, give me your land? Or has he always said, look, I'm going to bring you to a land flowing with milk and honey? The Most High was trying to give us land. We asked him for a king to take our land. The Most High was trying to make us prosperous. We want a king that's going to kill our prosperity. You got to think about the things that we asked for. Go ahead. Who got that word? Confectionaries. Uh, confectionary. Uh-huh. Candy and other sweet considered Consider collectively. Uh huh. A shop that sells candy or other sweets. Confectionary. You're gonna, you're gonna make your daughter. Uh, 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 <laughs> you're gonna make your daughter a, a, del a delicacy, a, a delicatessen, little, a little snack. A little snack. I, I mean, you gotta get another definition for that though. Yeah. Where's the black? Get the black book. Yeah, get the black dictionary. <laughs> you gonna make your daughter a a, a, a sweet treat? I mean, hey, is it far fetched? No. Because why? Because the king took because, the women. Yeah, and then, but and then when it went wicked. Oh yeah. If you guys look at a few Netflix series about these kings. Oh yeah. All the king was doing was sleeping with the women, and and, and just dumping them off. They using was them, using them. Using them and abusing. So they would unwrap the candy, lick it, and then put it back in the wrapper. <laughs> Yeah, when you look at uh, when I was looking at Henry, Henry the uh, Eighth, <laughs> looking at him, he would uh, he slept with his concubine, and then he gave that to his stepson. Oh, damn. you know, uh, so she can have a, uh, a baby. so she can have a husband. Oh, because man. after you you obviously when some you sleep with the king, you sleep with somebody, nobody wants you. Nope. So he gave her to his stepson. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it, it got to the point to where, especially when it got out of order. Now you yeah. you you got these situations to where, you know, now your daughters are being used up. Multiplying women. Yeah, that's what it was talking about. Multiplying, multiplying wives. Women. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm speaking in the sense of now you got kings going off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember that not every king went off. Yeah, none of the kings some, of, some of the kings went and followed where it wasn't about them. It wasn't about money, cars, clothes, and, right. you know, and, and, and women. It was about the nation. You know, mm -hmm. it was about dealing with the nation, raising up the nation, keep the laws of the Most High. But when they went off, what happened? All, all, all these, all these things went. With, yeah. went with it. Or one of these things. It wasn't all. They might yeah, have yeah. fell to one of these yeah. things. You know, but he was showing you. You know what he was showing us? The Most High was showing us the justness of him and, and the fairness of him being the king and how a man's imperfections would, 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 would you know, the, the, uh, those ill dealings. Now you don't want the king. Now you don't want to be ruled over. But he was showing us that the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with fairness and equity. But if you choose a man flesh over me, this is what's going to happen. One of these things is going to happen. You're going to lose your daughters, your son, your land, something. What you got for confectionaries? Same thing? Uh, pretty much. Uh, uh -huh. Sweet meats, things prepared or sold by confectorers. <laughs> right. 
You turn your daughter into a basically into sweet property, meat. man. Yeah. In the sweet meat. They turn. They, yeah, they, they tell, turn them into something that was. You know. Basically, listen. Your daughter now, if she's up there with the king. Oh yeah. Remember, you got a righteous way and the wicked way. Mm -hmm. She was up there with the king. You got to say it that way because brothers think, well, oh, uh, she's just a confectionery, huh? <laughs> she's just a sweet meat, brother. That was, <laughs> that was nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I, no, I, I can see it in your screen right, right now. And they, and they use that word confectionery. Yeah, they use the word. You got to. It's no longer white for concubine. Now, correctly. It's no longer white for concubine. Brothers will do it. Like, yeah, she's a confectionery. Like, uh, the most I said he was gonna be. Yeah, that you gotta office. understand the context that yeah. when he was saying it, he's saying that okay. Now, as opposed to you're giving your daughter right away, right, and promise to, and she is amongst the king. The king now has he can have the choice to choose that, mm -hmm. and if the king wants it, it's going to be the king's. It's not. It's not that it was it was wrong. It was that now that power was taken from. Him. You understand that? Okay. Now, on the other hand, when they were wicked, it was it was literally that word, even much more sweet meat. Sweet meat. Right? To where it's like, okay, I can dab into this, dig into this, and you know what? Now nah, I don't really want her to be my wife. You know, because when you start looking down, you, you can see that much more in the 16, 1500s when all the other kings start coming in mm -hmm. and they start dealing with these women because they were ruled by the Roman Catholic, right? You weren't supposed to have more than one wife, but they were doing it. They were doing it on the low, yeah. They were doing it on the low, and they were making these women whores and then passing them around. Yep. So now you see in the, in the, in the right context, in the right mind, and then you see what happens when they went off. Y'all get that? Uh, all right, so no confectionaries, all right? No, none. Don't even use the word. No sweet meats. No sweet meats, no nothing. All right. Don't, don't, don't open the candy, lick the wrapper, put it back in the wrapper. None of that. None of that. All right. Go ahead, read. Verse 14. <laughs> and he will take your fields Go ahead. and your vineyards uh -huh. and your olive yards, uh -huh. even the best of them, and give them to his servants. Right. Now, now what he remember, this wasn't always, this is not yet yet in a wicked context. This is that when, when it's needed, right? When David was on the run. And he was needed to a place to stay, a place to eat, mm -hmm. right? You you know he was the king. Uh, you you supposed to treat anybody with the goodness, but right. now when you mess up with the king, what had to happen? Ooh. You messed up, right? At what was it? Uh, uh, dang the the one that uh ah uh, he, he 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 wouldn't help David. What's his name? Oh, his name meant fool. Nabal, right. When Nabal messed up and he didn't want to help David, that came back to get him. Right? So his wife, what was her name? Abigail. Abigail had to fix the problem. Why? Because you disrespected the king. Right? So you see in the right context how it's used as opposed to now, no, this is our land. I am uh, Germany. We're taking this land for the military. We're taking your daughter and your kids for the military. Y'all see this? Uh, Go ahead. Because we did that anyway. I mean, yeah. Moses set up the military. He, he, he chose men to set the military up. There was somebody's husband that was, going, that was going to war, right? But it wasn't the children and all that stuff where it was in a way where, okay, I'm not agreeing with this. Y'all understand that, right? Right. There's two, there's two sides to it where we... We gave, why well, is she going to read down? We gave a tenth. We gave a tenth to who? To the Most High. To the Most High through the priesthood, right? right. Oh. But now we got to give a tenth to the king. And he could do that. He could do whatever he wants. Right, because the king was going to use that tenth in righteousness he was for, the, supposed to. for the kingdom. For the kingdom. But, right. but, but even, watch, when you read down in this part, yeah. he's showing us. Let's, yeah, let's just read, read it. Read it. Jump down. Jump down to verse. Watch. Jump down to verse eighteen. So we understand he's going. The king is going to take things, right? Good. As he should. But the point was that we gave all to the Most High. So even in doing that, we didn't lose anything. We didn't lose nothing by giving to the Most High. Good. Read verse eighteen. 
Verse 18. Uh -huh. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye shall have chosen you. Right. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Right, because we were going to look at these things like, wait a minute, I don't want to do this. I don't want to give the king the tenth. I don't want to give my sons and my daughters up. I don't want to lose my field. A whole field? Okay, it's one thing if, the, if, if a man comes and gleams the field and gets the edges, but damn, now I got to give up the whole field? We got to, I mean, think about the law where you plucked your ears of corn and you left the edges. But now I gotta give the whole field away. Because the king was gonna <laughs> distribute it amongst his nobles. Yeah, it says it. He would give it to the servants. Right, and 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 distribute it the way he wanted to. Uh-huh. Where it was yours. Right. The most high wasn't saying, give me your whole field. Think about it. Yeah. He didn't say, give me your whole field. He just said, take the first fruits. Right? Where you brought that offering to the most high, and then you were able to have your field, hand your field down, generation, generation. He was showing us that the things that we were asking for in this carnal flesh, we weren't prepared for. We weren't prepared for it. We weren't prepared to take on that burden of literally supporting the king. That's what you did. You, you, you were the one that gave your sons for the army, your daughters, to cook in the king's quarters. You were the one that gave that field so, that, so he could have somewhere to park his chariot and build his kingdom. But we already had the king. The Most High was showing us here, you're going to cry out because you're going to be like, damn. I got to do all this? Why? Why do I got to do all this now? Well, this is what you asked for. Read on, verse 19. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. They were like, bro, we don't care about none of that right now. Go ahead. And they said, nay, uh -huh. but we will have a king over us. Go ahead. That we also may be like all the nations. That we be like who? All the nations. Go ahead. And that our king may judge us. See, this is the problem with Israel. We always want to be like everybody else to this day. You, you want to be like, you, you even want to be like the wicked Israelite next to you. Instead of being your righteous self that you're building to, it's like you want to be like the wicked co-worker. You want to be like the dude that got all, that, that got all the women and all the money. You want to be him. You want to walk around in his shadow. For what? Just be the righteous man that you are. Don't be like the wicked Israelite or the wicked nations. This was always our downfall. Go ahead. This was even when you deal with David. Right? He said, I almost slipped looking at the prosperity of the wicked. It was the wicked nations and wicked Israel. Yeah, you know, I, I, I knew somebody that uh, that was, she was a real, she was real humble, real meek, but she had this real loud mouth, boisterous aunt. Uh-huh. And she... She she always seen her aunt as strength, and she was like, "Oh, I, I want to be. I need to be like her. I want to be like that." Uh -huh. And it's like, "No, don't be like that." Yeah. And she forced and pushed so much to be like that. She became that. Yeah. Got dragged through the mud, yeah. and then finally humbled. Like three kids later, three baby daddies later. Right, but none of them with her. None of them with her. Welfare checks and and, and tenth, right? Con. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what you asked for. You think that independent spirit is what it's about? That independent woman, that feminist movement? But see, you vote for that. Not even they didn't vote for the feminist movement. They didn't vote for women's rights. They didn't have it on a ballot. Okay, let's vote to get equal pay. Let's vote for women, let's vote for women to be able to vote. They voted for these things. You probably have black women voting for these things, but guess what? When you voted for that, you voted to get your man out the house. You voted for your kids to be raised by the homeboys on the block. They give you one thing, but the knife is, they, you know, they give you the welfare check in one hand, but the knife is behind the back, ready to stab you. That's that's the, the reality of this society. You know, I was, <laughs> you know, when you think about abortion, man, and you think about all the women that go out, they abort their babies, Israelite women, they abort, they abort these kids, man. The Most High said he, he chose us from the foundation when he formed us in the womb. And you go, you abort that baby, and that spirit got to come back another way. It's going to happen, but think about what you do to you, to your blessing later down the line. When now you, you finally settle down, after 30 dudes, you find the one you want to be with, right? And you become this born-again virgin, because that's what they do. Like, I'm a virgin all over again because I found who I want to live my life for, and then now it's time to have kids. And guess what? That womb is shut up. 
Because why? You aborted, you destroyed what the Most High gave you in the beginning. Why? Following these people's laws and policies. Well, I had to, I had freedom of choice. I, I, you know, I had the choice to do it. Well, you also had the choice to let that child live. Choose you this day, life or death. So it can be prosperous for you. We forget about our seed. We forget about that. And your own wickedness will correct you. It might not hate you, but guess what? Your children won't pay for that. Read on. And judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Right. Verse 21. And Samuel heard all the words of the people. Uh huh. And, re and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. Right. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice. Yeah, he said, man, give them what they want. Go ahead. And make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. Uh-huh. Now jump over to 1 Samuel 12. And verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 12. Now it's about to start getting me. 1 Samuel 12, verse 12. Check this out. Verse 12. And when ye saw that Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you. Right. You so this is a whole other nation. When the Most High sent the children of Ammon against us, because he did, he said, Ammon, Moab, right? Go ahead. He said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us. Right. When the Lord your power was your king. When who was our king? When the Lord your power was your king. Go ahead. Now, therefore, behold the king whom ye have chosen. Go ahead. And whom ye have desired. Uh-huh. And behold. The Lord has set a king over you. Go ahead. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice. Now he said, listen, behold, I'm going to give you the king. But you got to do what? Fear the Lord. Read. And serve him. Uh-huh. And obey his voice. Read. And not rebel against the commandment of the Lord. Then shall both ye and also the king that reigned over you uh -huh. continue following the Lord your power. What, what verse you at? Verse 15, go ahead. Verse 15. Choose you this day, life or death. Go ahead. But if ye will not obey the voice of the, of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you. Right. As it was against your fathers. Now, the, uh -huh. now therefore stand and see this great thing, which the Lord will do before your eyes. Right. Read verse 17. Check this out. Is it not we harvest today? Uh huh. I will call unto the Lord, uh -huh. and he shall send thunder and rain. Go ahead. That ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great. Read. Which ye have done in the sight of the Lord, uh -huh. and asking you a king. Yeah, the Most High said it was wicked for you to try to get you a king. It was wicked for you to even ask. Because why? We already had a king. Now, what we got to understand is that when we're in this society, and we understand what happened, the Most High said Saul, what happened with Saul? Man, listen, Saul wasn't even in office 100 days. He didn't even make it past his 100 days. You know, the 100 days is like the benchmark for a president. The first 100 days is where he implements all his policies. And yeah. Saul didn't even make it the 100 days, man. He was already rebelling. Saul fought, fought one war, right? He fought one war against the Philistines. He won. He was supposed to go out and do something else, which was kill another nation, kill everything. And he was like, nope, I'm going to do me, dog. And as soon as he did that, the Most High said, it repented me to set up Saul as the king. So we know what happened. We got Saul. Saul went off. We got David. David did his thing. We got Solomon and so forth and so on. Now we got damn uh, Trump. <laughs> right? Now we got Trump. This is what it is. We went from Moses to Trump. <laughs> you got to see that. But so now we got to understand, for those of you that still don't understand why it doesn't make sense for us to vote, go to Job 924. This is what we have to understand. This is what we have to understand about who you vote for. There is no less of the two evils. It's just straight wickedness. It's just straight wickedness. And that this is why your vote, it don't matter if you vote or not. And why you shouldn't even participate. Job 9.24. Job chapter 9 verse 24. Uh -huh. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Wait, wait, is some, it's a little bit righteous? The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Well, I'm going 
going to vote for the lesser of the two evils. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Yeah, it don't matter if you vote for Democrat or Republican, they're all wicked. Point blank, period, class over. Let's go home. That's all we need. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So do you think that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to vote for you know the Democrats because they love blacks and Hispanics. I'm voting for Beto. Everybody's on this Beto tip. This dude from, I guess he's acting like he's Issachar, but he's really Esau, and everybody just likes the name. <laughs> this is dude out here in Texas, Beto. Everybody's on him, right? Thinking that, oh, he's the new, he's the new savior. Savior from what? He's just like the wicked. Because he is the wicked. He's just on a different side of the, of the, of the ballot. So read it again. We got to make sure that y'all get this point. Read it. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Right. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Right. If not, where? Yeah, no matter what, no matter if you vote for Democrat, Republican, your face, your black and Hispanic Israelite face don't matter. They going to brush you under the rug. They going to get you to vote. They going to say, listen, we going to implement all these policies we're going to give a little extra money to the black community, to the YMCA, to Black Lives Matter. You're going to get gassed up. Oh, Black Lives Matter. Hey, they're going to give us an extra two Gs, dog. Right? They'll promise you that the Sprint bill is going to go down. They, they, give you, they lie to you about everything. We're going to lower the tax on, on, on Cadillacs. <laughs> we'll even legalize weed. And y'all like, yeah, let's vote for the Democrats. We need them. Not realizing that they got some wicked policy coming right behind all the beautiful things they promised you. Like how they did to us in the 50s, the 60s, with WIC, with food stamps, with TANF, uh, Section 8. They give you all these things and make it sound and look so wonderful and glorious. Like, look, you can own your own five-bedroom, three-bathroom house for $1 a month. Well, you better not have no man bringing no income up in there. You better not have no structure. You better not have no guidance. You better not have no wisdom. Because if you have that, uh-uh. Mm -mm, do it. Come on, do it. <laughs> mm -mm. You better not have those things, else that dollar a month is going to be $1,500 a month, and your ass going to be homeless. Yeah. They scare you. They give you a dollar a month rent. Come on, y'all know. Think about how many of y'all wanted to sign up for Section 8. Jealous of your one homegirl that don't gotta pay no rent. She pay a dollar a month, got a whole fridge full of food, and got the whole food stamp card full. And she got a little bit of cash benefits too. So guess what she's doing? And she got child support coming in. And she got child support coming in. So what's she doing? From Joe Donut. She out there paying for the drinks at the bar. She over there taking that out for ladies night. You sitting, she, she got a nice car with rims. Her nails is thin all the time. Her weave is laid, all the edges is laid, and you sitting here busting your ass at, at work 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Can barely pay rent. You live in the hood. She live in the, she live in the burbs. Cause that's where Section 8 be at. But you live in the hood. Drugs, gunshots. And you sitting there like, damn, how do I get that? Well, you gotta get rid of your man. <laughs> that's first. Get rid of your man. That, that's the first and only thing you gotta do. And then you sit there and you really compromise. But what happens is this. You start to let the you start to let the, the the weight of what you see and what you want, it starts to weigh you down. And then you start to bring contention into the house. So now you argue with your man because it's like he ain't, you know, he does one little thing you don't like, and the food stamp thing and the, the nails done and the, the weave laid, that's that's on the other side, and you're like, man. Now you start to argue, Doesn't contention, envy the, wicked. envy the wicked, and what happens? Your man is like, man, I ain't dealing with this, I'm out. I'm out. And then now you need to be on food stamps because you ain't got that second income. So now you get it, right? Now you get it, and now you understand that, oh, can't have a man in the house, so now what do you do? You gonna get you a woman. <laughs> you gonna be a lesbian because you can't have no man, but you want that companionship. Or you just be a hoe. You just move around them clubs, you know, get you a little one night love. You know what I'm saying? You get married every other night. Every, every lady's night, it's a new husband. 
get a few babies, man. And, and a few it, child support. Yeah, you get a couple. But but the thing is, the companionship. The, you get the money now, but you need that companionship. So either I go get me a man and have him live full time, or I be with a bunch of men, or I just go get I move me and a chick and say she's a roommate, but she's really my lesbian lover. You see how they progressed us into let into lesbianism. And homosexuality just from like giving you food stamps? Oh, I could talk about this all day. I could go in on this. All day. <laughs> all day. Cause then you go get you the lesbian that looks like your boyfriend. It's oh. listen. <laughs> if you thought it was a conspiracy theory, <laughs> just go look in the hood. Go look! This I, we know y'all gotta <laughs> I know a lot of y'all Hebrew Israelites, like some of y'all us is successful and we got a nice job. Right, you ain't you ain't in the in the in the crackhead hoods no more. Ooh. You're what they call uh You're transitioning. Yeah. You're, you're a transitioning black you, male. You live in the good area. But the, the there's what? some of our people, man, that yeah. still live hard on those brick houses out down fifth ward, yeah. third ward. Those are the ones that think like this. Yeah. We we know you guys you you can you can fill it with Israel. Like, really, is that real? Like, like, you know, Why? Because you got to do that job. I ain't in that. Right. You, can, you got a good job, but it ain't yeah. all about you. It's about your people still in the ghettos and the slums with a ghetto and slum mentality. Mm -hmm. You know. So we, we we know you you don't supposed to be on that mind, but a lot of our people are. When they gave out free phones. For dang, uh, oh, Obama, Obama. Yeah. It's a free phone. We're like five minutes a month. Think of it. Oh, it it's was like the, they were laughing at niggas. And it's a flip. They were <laughs> laughing at our people. Now, you were thinking like, yeah, it's a free phone, right? Yeah. You can go get that and, you know, you get it with T-Mobile, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. Nope. In the hood, they ain't, they ain't thinking about credit. Nope. They ain't thinking about, oh, I can get it. <laughs> they like, bro, a free phone? Yeah. But then what were they doing with that? Selling it for, you know, weed. And they, they were using that. To, no, they were using the free phone thing. That's how they were getting cats that weren't paying their child support. Oh. That's how they were getting uh, cats that had warrants. Yeah. Like, yeah, sign up for this free phone and come sign up. We'll give it out. But they were using that. To, oh, you got a felony. You got a warrant. You got child support. Mock up. That's how they do that. They okay. use these things. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. They use these things, man, to get you. They use it. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Daniel 4.17. Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. We got we to gotta understand that we're not in a righteous place. So whatever policy you vote for or you think you're exacting change in your community, I guarantee you, you can vote for whoever the hell you want. They will shoot a black man right in front of your house. Let him drain out for five, six hours like they did Mike Brown. They don't care. It don't matter who you vote for. Because the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Uh, Daniel 4, 17. Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Mm. This matter mm. is by the decree of the watchers. Come on. And the, the men by the word of the holy of the holy ones. Read. To the intent that the living may... Uh, Lamar, read. That the living may know... That the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Go ahead. And give it into whomever he will. He does what? Give it into whomever he will. So the Most High still rules, but it said the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Now, we know it's for a short time, but the Most High does what? Give it into whomever he will. Go ahead. And set it up over in the deep beset of men. No, read it again. Lock, and, lock around, read. The Most High, it's a lot. to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, uh -huh. and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Go ahead. And set it up over it, the beset, the, no, basis, the basis of, of men. Yeah, listen, he gave this earth to the base men. He gave it to the, base, the brute beast animal men. So think about it. If these men are basing their wisdom and knowledge and thinking, you think that their policies are going to be anything that's enlightening? You think their policies are going to really be anything that's going to benefit your life? The Most High said, I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Donald Trump is the basis of man. He's a base, brute, beast animal that's going to bring evil. 
Go to 1 Corinthians one twenty-seven. Go to 1 Corinthians one twenty-seven. You got to see it, man. What are you voting for? You're voting for base thinking. For animal, natural, brute beast thinking. Oh, well, his policy says, you know, they're going to, they're going to, you know, raise funding for, for this community and raise funding here. And, and, but guess what? They're raising funding for, funding for the damn YMCA, but cutting funding for your child's education. The YMCA ain't got nothing on school. Why? So they can keep the pool blue? Come on, man. <laughs> but they're taking funding from schools and shutting down schools. So now, what do you got to do? You got to end up homeschooling your kid anyway. Because the school shut down. You might as well just start. But it's because we have base men. The earth has been given into the hand of wicked base men. So how enlightening, how, how good, how righteous is his policy? But now you see why all this on the ballot is homo or not. That's what it should just say. Gay or not. <laughs> That's what it should say. Referendum A, homosexuality. Referendum B, no. <laughs> wow. That's all it should say because everything got something to do with sleeping with a damn animal or banging some guy. Uh -huh. Or legalizing some porn. Or, I mean, you got to see it. Think about the confusion in America where you can go to Nevada and buy prostitutes. But everywhere else is legal. It's illegal. Why is it legal in one state but illegal in everywhere else? Well, for one, the Bible speaks against it. But see, the baseness of these men, the vileness of this creature, he's like, yeah, I'm going to confuse y'all. So if you live in Nevada, you can buy hoes. But anywhere else you go, it's illegal. But what if I don't know that? What if I don't know it's illegal to buy a prostitute in Cali? And I go do it. Now I'm locked up. But in my hometown, it's legal, dog. You see how they, how they get you with their policies and their craftiness? It's, this is why. Read. Read 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27. Uh -huh. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And this is why we're so confounded and blinded. He used a foolish ass Donald Trump. Foolish Bill Clinton. We all thought, oh, Bill Clinton's a black man because he smokes weed and he loves women. And y'all sitting there riding with that like he was really black. This dude was a base, brute beast animal also. But y'all sitting there thinking that he was for black people. George Bush, you letting him get under your skin. He couldn't even read good. <laughs> he couldn't even read good. Come on, he couldn't even. He reading the children in the damn World Trade Center getting bombed. Like, nigga, you couldn't even read. Talking about dialing up on the Google. How you dial anything up on Google? He was base. But he uses that to confound us. He uses a base man like George Bush. A base man like Donald Trump? Donald Trump is, listen, Donald Trump has been roasted and made fun of more than any man on the planet Earth. Y'all gonna go watch the roast of Donald Trump when they roast this guy. You got Snoop Dogg roasting Trump and Kevin Hart and all these guys before he was even in office. But they elect him and say, here, this is your president, this is your leader. Follow him. This nigga's dumb. He's smart financially, but dumb as hell in any other realm. Listen, all he did to get his finances how America was built, he he robbed. Yeah, he robbed he rich. tricked. Mm -hmm. He he connived. He he borrowed he borrowed from daddy. Yeah, and, and he 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 mm -hmm. did bankruptcy a thousand times. He knew he, <laughs> that where he's smart as is he knows how to manipulate the law. Yeah. He don't pay tax. Listen, he telling you to pay taxes, but he don't pay tax. He's telling you to pay think of it. Trump, he's not about paying taxes, dog. Trump don't do tax. But now he's the president telling you, I'm going to charge you tax. Think about that. So do as I say, not as I do. That's the leadership. Read, read where you at. And God has chosen the weak things uh -huh. of the world. Go ahead. To confound the things which are mighty. We are the mighty. We are the, the strength of this world, but we're being confounded by the weakness. Read verse 28. And base things of the world. Uh-huh. And things which are despised. Read. Has chosen and had, had God chosen. Read. Yeah. And things which are not. And things which are what? Are not. Yeah, he said I'm gonna use a people that are not a people. You got this damn Edomite, this red ass Edomite. <laughs> it's orange. Man, or orange. You like one of them Jersey Shore boys. 
Right, like he been hanging out on Jersey Shore. Jim Tan, what is their acronym? Jim Tan and and laundry. GTL. Jim Tan laundry. <laughs> but that's what he looked like. What like he been hanging out on Jersey Shore, just getting a tan, orange as hell, with a with a with a comb over that just flaps in the wind. You got the comb over from hell, man. But we sitting here getting confounded by him. Read on. To bring to not things that are. Right, because we are the things that are. That are. Go to. <laughs> man, go to 2 Corinthians 4. Wow. You got the come over from hell, man. You got that come over that come from the bottom of his ankles. He combed over all that hair on his body. Go to, go to, go to 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians. Four verse one. Second Corinthians chapter four verse one. Uh huh. Therefore, sin, we have this ministry. Right. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Right, because the Most High has given us mercy. He has given us grace. So we don't want to faint. We don't need to faint. We got the power, the strength to keep pushing. Read on. But have renounced the hidden things of this honest. But guess what? When you vote. When you get your when you get your vote on and you run around with your little sticker, they don't even give you a pin no more. They're so cheap. They give you a damn sticker. They, they used to give you a pin back in the day at least. You could keep it for the whole four years and say, yeah, I voted. Now they give you a sticker. Right? But when you go vote and you and you punch your ballot and you choose something wicked over something else wicked, you're no longer renouncing the things of dishonesty, the hidden things. Of dishonesty. Go ahead. Not walking in craftiness. Go ahead. Nor handling the word of God. The secret. Because this is what these politicians do. They come, they swear on the Bible, put up your left hand, right hand on the Bible. I swear on the Bible that I'll uphold the Constitution. How the hell do those two, two things even mix? What does the Constitution of America got to do with the Bible? In God we trust, but they never pull out one statue. Law when it's time to judge you. That's what these politicians are about. Right? Church and state, prayer and school, but then they'll vote to take prayer out of the school and make you pledge to the flag. Read on. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience uh -huh. in the sight of your hope. Do they do that? Do they, are they commending themselves to your conscience? To the Israelite conscience? How are you killing us in the streets? How, how, is, how are you condescending to me when you're, when you're, when you're giving my kids uh, transgender bathrooms? Wow. How is that condescending to my conscience? You're destroying my conscience. But when you vote, you're saying, you know what? I want, I'm going to help to destroy my child's conscience. I'm going to help you, white man. I'm going to help you to destroy me. I'm going to help you to destroy my people. Read on. I'm gonna get to you. Read on. Verse three. But if our gospel be hid, right, and is hid to them that are lost. Reverse. Reverse four. Verse four. Uh huh. And whom the God of this world. The God of who? The God of this world. The God of what? This world. Read. Hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see that? That's what they do with their tricks, with their policies, with their. Their Ponzi schemes, their three car mollies. That's what they, that's what it is, man. They give you one thing, move it around, shuffle it, and then it's something else, or it just disappears. They hit you with these things, and it's like they done blinded you. But who's doing it? It ain't the most high. It's the God of this world, the king you vote for. He blinds you with his policies. What were you gonna say, Lakarov? And then somebody else get Daniel 825. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say the majority of people don't even like really watch the debates of the people that they're going that, that they're voting for, right? No, and they if, don't. And if you watch it, like for instance, like I've been seeing like a lot of uh, commercials since it's voting season. Oh yeah. You'll see like a lot of commercials about vote for this guy, or don't vote for this guy. Right. And when you watch it, it's like there's no leadership there. Absolutely none. Like no. the only thing they're doing is just bashing this person, and this person's bashing that person. Yeah. And it's like, ain't nothing, when you look at them, ain't nothing for to get fixed. It's called a smear campaign. Yeah, that's all they're doing, literally. Mm -hmm. Well, because they have no, 
Watch. Because they have no true policy that's going to benefit anybody. Exactly. All it is is, I'm going to make you look bad so that I can be voted for. It's basically the person that looks the worst, we ain't going to vote for him. It's like, it's like you were saying, right, in uh -huh. verse 2. Read it. When it says, commended ourselves to every man's conscience uh -huh. in the sight of God. Like, you can see it. Like, ain't nobody, ain't nobody appealing to our conscience. Right. The only thing that they want like, it's literally, it's literally, oh, yeah, we got to close the borders. Right. That's literally it. That's like literally every everything that uh, all these politicians Trump? is talking about. Right. Not just Trump, but like even like the senators and the governors. Right, right, right. You're so right. It ain't no... Ain't no real action or anything like that. Because, didn't take because that's the, the talking point to keep you to keep you voting, yeah, to keep you interested. To keep you interested. Yeah. You know, it's it's like a it's like a talk show. It's like a a game show. But you know what it is too, the blind it's to blind the eyes. It's to blind you from what they really wanna what they're really trying to do, the real agenda. Yeah, we're we're build, we'll build a wall from and make Mexico pay for it, right? Wasn't that Trump's thing? We'll build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. Yep. The, the whole damn America was like, yay! We're going to keep the Mexicans out. But as soon as he got in office, first of all, did he do that? Uh, no, he didn't do that. But he'll still talk about it. He'll talk about that for the next eight years. He'll be voted in again. He'll talk about that for the next eight years. But what they're doing is they're sliding in some other policies behind the door. We'll build a wall. We'll build a wall. We'll build a wall. But they're putting embargoes on this country for not participating in homosexuality. They're putting in trade sanctions on this com on this country because they're talking about the Bible. They're doing all these things, not putting it out there in the media, but they're talking about we'll build a wall. I mean, you see it now. They're talking about is these immigrants coming up through Ecuador, right, and uh, El Salvador. Y'all y'all seen that, right? Yeah. And where are they headed? They headed right here. And what's what, what's Trump talking about? Sending troops and sending this and sending that. Keeping you blinded because I'm sure they're, they're going to sign, pass some other nonsense in the bill right when that's going on. Watch, go to Daniel 825. Daniel 825. This is the epitome of America right here. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Uh huh. And through his policy. And through his what? His policy. Go ahead. Also, he shall cause crap to prosper yeah. in his hand. Through his policy. This is how they get that witchcraft into the minds of the people. I'm going to put it through the policies. I'm going I'm to legalize homosexuality. I'm a, but then guess what I'm going to do with that? Y'all know that when they legalize homosexuality, pedophilia, transgender, all that, just bestiality. bestiality all fell under that umbrella. Because now it's a lifestyle choice. You want to say something? No, now it's a lifestyle choice to be a homo. But guess what? Slow is sleeping with, with Fido. That's a lifestyle choice. Slow is marrying Flipper. That's a lifestyle choice. So is being a pedophile and marrying a five-year-old boy. That's a lifestyle choice now. They, huh? Yeah, I want to be a tree hugger, but for real. I want to be a tree hugger. I'm going to sleep with a tree. I seen the man, this dude was talking about he in love with a roller coaster. What the hell are you talking about? He over there licking the metal. Come on, man. It, but you got these people now, or I associate, I, I what is it, um, um, gender identification, but it's also, you have, um, 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 where I associate with this age, I'm a, I'm a 50 year old fat white man, but but I associate as oh, a five year old girl. Trans age. Or trans, trans age, age tra yeah, trans age. Transgender, right? Um, I associate as a five year old girl, even though I'm a 50 year old white man. Wow. See, when you, when you, through the policy of legalizing homosexuality, this broad, this broad thing, there's all these sub things that happen under it: lesbianism, pedophilia, transgenderism. Now it's okay for a man to switch up his sex. His sex. Now it's okay for a five-year-old child to figure out to choose whatever he wants to be, or she wants to be. Through the policy, go ahead. And he shall magnify. Himself in his heart. And he shall do what? Magnify himself in his heart. Because Trump don't believe in God. That's why he got his space for us. To do what? To fight Christ. He magnifies himself as God. I mean, we go all the way into Obadiah, we know. But he magnifies himself as God because why? Now he can change your sex. 
Now he can clone you. Because he has the science that he's, he, now he can take your stem cells and grow your limbs back. Because he put in, he put policies in play to do so. Y'all see this, right? Uh, Go ahead. He shall also stand up against the prince. No, 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 you, you missed the part. It says by peace, God, he shall destroy many. How? How, how does he destroy many by peace? Lock her up. Oh, easy. They, 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 they go over there proclaiming that they're going to bring this country to democracy. And then it's a complete Thank you. opposite. It's yeah. a complete opposite. God. By peace. Oh, we, we need to make sure that they're not, you know, we got a, a peace in the Middle East. That was the biggest slogan back in Desert Storm. Peace in the Middle East. But it was peace before they went. It was peace before they went. Before we killed Saddam, or they killed Saddam, before they... Start looking for Obama or uh, uh, Osama, Osama and Obama, cousins, right? They they home, they they cousins, third cousins. But before they, you know, oh, uh, the 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 nine eleven bombing. Now we got to go put peace in a country that don't need our peace. They don't need America's democracy. They they're good practicing good old uh, Islam. They're they're good on that. They'll they'll behead a cat if he steals. <laughs> They'll behead their woman if she cheats. Because why? They understand rebuke them sharply, so all may fear. Yeah. They're in there. They're good. They don't need our they don't need America's peace and democracy. All that did was incite more chaos, more rioting, more bombing. You watch the movies, man, where America will shoot missiles over and blow up. They'll blow up. Um they'll blow up like a spot over there in the Middle East. And what what will they do? He'll kill a little boy's mom, his dad, his family. Guess what that little boy grows to be? A damn terrorist over here in America, blowing up America, blowing up London, blowing up Europe. You watch all them shows, man. America makes these terrorists because we got to make sure that there's peace. But our peace is what? Kill, rape, rob, pillage, oil, money. God. But now you build a terrorist because you thought that peace was dropping a bomb on a damn community. You kill somebody's family. Go ahead, read on. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. He shall do what? Stand up against the prince of princes. Yeah, you got you got Obama, uh, you got uh, Trump with his space force. You gonna put troops in space to do what? They know what's up. They know that Yahweh Shai is coming from that fourth. Uh, too bad, you're not gonna be able to stop it. So let's go through some of these policies real quick. We got 30 minutes. Go to Exodus 20, 22 and 19. Because we've been talking about it. The, the first one. They, speak, they talk about it's okay now. You know, it's funny. It's funny. Even with America, you got to see how crafty America is. They even put in policies in play that affect other countries. Like you have countries in the Middle East, you know, all these Middle Eastern countries. They claim they're not down with homosexuality and bestiality. We know damn well they are. They're vile animals also. They're vile as hell. But Obama signed in when he did the homosexuality. He signed in play that it was okay to sleep with camels. It was okay to sleep with goats. Fish. Fish. But they were able to, they, they were, it's okay now because think about this. A military base in Iraq is considered what? No, that's it's considered part of the U.S. Right. So now you're enacting these policies overseas on a military base because they do it. That's where they, these dudes, man, they, these 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 hardcore Marines, they be out there banging camels, yeah, and sleeping with goats. They, there's photos of these dudes doing it. They make it legal. Now they're doing this stuff in, in, in these other countries and defiling these other countries. But guess what they will do? They'll take away all your porn. You know, all the military men, they have their women, they'll sell them like little flicks. They'll sell them a little Playboy magazine. But they'll go through all your stuff and throw away all the lubricants and all the, the porn and all that. But then they'll say, yeah, go sleep with a camel. You got to think about the mentality, man. Think about the mind. Go ahead, read. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 19. Uh -huh. Whosoever lies with a beast shall surely be put to death. But, but Obama said it's good. Whosoever lies with a beast shall surely be put to death. Yeah, that was the most high letting us know this is what's going to happen. Choosing this day life or death. Ain't no 
gray area here. You sleep with a beast, you put to death. Leviticus 18 and verse 23. America says that it's okay to sleep with a beast. You can even get a marriage license. You want to you wanna lay with your dolphin? You, you can do that. You want to you wanna put peanut butter on yourself and let, and, and let Fido get at you? You can do that. You got documentaries, man, of women talking about the first time that they, they, they got approached on by their dog or by their horse, like, oh, my horse came on to me. Yeah, look it up, man. They got a whole community. I forget the name of the community. The type of people that sleep with animals, there's a name for it. You know, it's bestiality, but they have a community. But they got documentaries like, yeah, you know, I was I was bending over to clean the pool, and then I felt, you know, I felt Rocky rub up on me. But you didn't stop him. Well, no, it, it felt great. Like, what the? These women, even, like, and this, you know, it's Esau. And then, you know, you got the Edomite man. He's sitting there like, yeah, and I watched. And it turned me on. It's like, what? You watched your wife get hit by the pony? And it turned you on? Like, there's no coming back from that. But see, these things were in the closet for a while. But now when they put their, when they enact their policies, they let this witchcraft prosper. You got to see what they do. Homosexuality was a, a closet thing. Because what did they say? I'm coming out the closet. Now there is no closet. Now there is no closet. There's nothing to step out of. Now you just get it. Now you're born like that. You see how they do it? They let the witchcraft prosper through their policies. Read Leviticus 18.23. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast uh -huh. to defile thyself therewith. Because it's, it is a defiled act. <laughs> Bottom line, is, I don't care what, which way you look at it. It's an animal. It's a beast. Think about just the disease. But what you got? You got you got Tijuana, Mexico. The right, the, the, the donkey show. Right? You got cats on Facebook hitting their python. Yes. Sex with <laughs> sex with a snake. I've seen that. Bro, it it it, it yes, I've seen that too. It, it, it a, threw me for a loop. Time. Wow. I wish that dude would have just got coiled up and strangled. Gone. You got cat oh the you know you, the, you don't let a cat in jail. <laughs> find himself a kitten or a rabbit running loose in the field. That rabbit is done. Because they like that. Having sex with rabbits and cats. Dogs. Donkeys. I mean, they make it leave. They make it into a show. And then they joke about it on TV. And, and they, they, they desensitize you to it and make you feel like it's okay. So when in doubt, hit the python. Come on, man. It's called Zoophilia. Zoophilia. Thank you. That's what it is. It's zoophilia. Bro. Zoophilia. What's up? I bet Steve Irwin was doing that. It probably was. That's why a stingray got him. It's showing multiple states that's doing it. Like, they're dark. How dark it is. showing multiple states. Oh, that they legalize it? Yeah, that they're doing it. Like, yeah, they out there just hitting it. Where's Texas at? Texas white? Uh, yeah, they probably get dark, though. Yeah. All you need is one. All you need is one state to say it's okay. And then there's some type of tax revenue in it. Shit, everybody gonna be down. Dang. That's what I mean. Think about the weed. Atlanta. How much money they make? Atlanta, right? Oh, yeah, they out there hitting dogs. Everything. Ain't enough men no more. Dang. All the men are. There ain't enough men for the men to get. So they about they out there hitting their pit bulls. Mississippi. Wow. Yeah. Think about it though. That's mostly black communities, man. Dang. But they let craft prosper through their policy. This witchcraft, man, this homosexuality, this bestiality, zoophilia. So you got zoo. So so after the P, they gonna put the Z, right? For pedophilia, then it's gonna be zoophilia because that's my lifestyle choice. That's what I want. But see, these are the things you vote for when you don't look at the earmarks in your in your in your favorite politician's policies, where he said, yeah, zoophilia is okay. Can, can I get one just on that? Yes, Ninety four. Verse 20. Yes, you can change the world. You call me, I got it. <laughs> I was singing the Obama song. Sentence 94, <laughs> verse 20. Oh, uh, you know you miss me. I've <laughs> <laughs> been up here singing since you've been gone. I got a song for every class. I You oh. singing? <laughs> Go ahead, read. It's um, 94, verse 20. Read that. Psalms chapter 94, verse 20. Go ahead. Shall, shall the throne 
of iniquity have fellowship with thee. Right. Mm -hmm. See, that's what we're dealing with. We're having we're dealing with the throne of iniquity. Mm -hmm. The earth is giving it to the hand of the wicked. Right? So they oh. have do they be joined with the most high? Damn. La. No. That's nasty. This kingdom is not the Lord's kingdom. This is Satan's kingdom. Oh. Go ahead. Which frame it mischief by a law. Right. Wow. They frame mischief by law. Oof. Right? So how can we get it in? How can we influence and get the mind of the people into, into uh, Satanism? How can we get them to perform a Illuminati type of ceremony? Mm -hmm. Oh, just make it the law of the land. Right? How do we get them to learn and love, uh, learn to love wickedness? Just make it the law of the land. It's okay for you to do it. That's why right now, as much as we talk about homosexuality, and we destroy that, right? Mm -hmm. But give it five more years. Oh yeah. He'll be like, damn, that's all brothers talk about. Like it's it's gonna numb you out. You know why? Because the world around you, you're gonna be thinking, if your mind ain't right, that it's okay. It's just the way of life. Everywhere around you is just gonna be a way of life. That's why if we don't stay in this book, if we don't stay in these scriptures, that law becomes real to you, right? The, the, the things you see on TV, the wickedness you see in the, the Man, just think about it. Good it's getting to the point, like, remember when you used to see, like, I seen uh, uh, Michael, Mike, uh, Magic Johnson's son, he's transitioning. This nigga was walking around with a wig on, a blonde wig at that. Oh yeah, he's just going all right? the way out. Now, when is it going to get to the point where you're just like, yeah, that's, that's just the way America is? Yeah. Well, it's there. It's no, there. it should never be there. It should there. never be there. It should never there. be there for us to be like. Oh, you saying for us? No, yeah, no, no, no. Right. no, no, no. Yeah, that's just, the, that's, no, just, no, 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 no. that's just how it is. Nope. You should always want to get a brick. Yeah. <laughs> Stones. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Because, it, it, and, I, and I'm saying spiritually because. It's, it's that filth that you get dis, desensitized to, and it's like, yeah, that's, you know, you can't judge. Yeah, yeah. Then you start thinking like Americans. You know, you're just judging. That's what you do with Christmas. Ah, oh, it's just Christmas. It's, it could be worse. But no, it's not. It's just, this is idolatry. It's wickedness. It's the beginning of spiritual wickedness, that Christmas tree being put up in their house. But that's why we go in on this faggot transition. Uh, because especially if you got kids, you should understand why. Because our kids are going to have to go through that that lifestyle and destroy and battle that. You never want your kids to go pet a dog, and the person's like, "Don't touch my girlfriend." Dang. You <laughs> you don't want that. Like, hey, that's a puppy. Let me go touch him. And the dude's like, "Don't touch my woman." That's what's going to happen in ten years. It's, it says service dog, and he, you go touch it, he's like, don't touch my wife. It's serving me. It's, it's my service dog. But that's what's going to happen. Go, what's up, my Rob? Yeah, they got that commercial where the man is driving and the dog is in the passenger seat and the kids are in the back. Oh, damn. They already in there. The dog looked behind the kids. I guess the kids were like acting up or something. Like the dog, the was, dog was the mom? <laughs> oh, there it is. But see, but see, but... But, yeah. but but that's wow. why it says through their policy, through it like I love this scripture right here. <laughs> Mischief by law. Oh my God, because now like he was saying, it, and then, and then they ease it in with the they ease it in with the uh, with the TV and the commercials like, oh yeah, just a dog riding in the car. Every American does that. Let the dog ride on your lap in the car. I've seen that before. Man's best friend. Man's best friend. But how much of a friend is it? Oh, that's a man's wife now. That I mean, you got, we got to see it. That's how they ease these things in. Let's finish up. Jump, uh, jump. Uh, so we we understand that, right? Well, finish that Leviticus real quick. Leviticus chapter eighteen, verse twenty-three. Uh huh. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself. Right. With. Go ahead. Neither shall any woman. Stand before a beast to lie down there too. Go ahead. It is confusion. It's confusion. 
So if y'all can read down in that, for time's sake, I'm gonna jump. Now, what's another policy that America holds? Women in the military, they love that. Equal rights and justice for all. You know, you can do what a man can do. But was that our policy? Was that the policy of the most high? Go to uh, Exodus 17 and verse eight. Exodus 17 and verse eight. Exodus chapter 17 and verse eight. Go ahead. Then came Amalek uh -huh. and fought with Israel in Rephim. Go, go ahead. And Moses said unto jo Joshua, Read. Choose us out, out men. Choose us what? Out men. Women. Out men. Children. Out men. Wait, wait, but arm the dog. Choose us out men. Go ahead. And go out. Fight with Amalek. Uh -huh. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Yahweh in my hand. What kind of coward sends his woman to war? What kind of coward ass nation puts their women on the front lines and then tries to disguise it as equal rights? A woman can do what a man can do. That's some cowardice, man. At least back in the day, this country had the decency to say, you know what? We'll send all the men to war, you women go to work. But see, through their policy, they cause craftiness to prosper. Through their laws, equal rights and justice and feminist movement, women can do whatever they whatever they want, equal pay. They throw women on the front line to be killed. Ain't no woman belonging in no damn war. They had a draft today. And what you think it'd just be men? It'd be men and women. The day they said women could go into the army and the military and the air force was the day they said they could draft your mama into a war. Or your daughter. Your, your nice little tender and loving daughter. Imagine that, man. She ain't never seen blood in her life. But they're going to draft her into a war? They're going to draft her into something that, 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 by nature, war wasn't for women. By nature. Think about it. Look at, go, go to the whole damn animal kingdom. When it was time to fight, who fought? The men. Who, when it was time to hunt, who hunted? The women. The women. Lion, let's deal with the Lion Kingdom. The women hunted, the men fought. Listen, the women didn't even fight the males when they were killing their when they were killing their young. When a new king, when a new male lion came into that pride and killed those young, that woman didn't even fight that male. She bowed down because she knew she was gonna die. She wasn't powerful enough, she wasn't strong enough. I don't care how much how much testosterone you inject into your buttocks. I don't care how much you cut your breasts off. I don't care how much you know you walk around with the strap on in your in, in, in your pant leg all the time. I don't care how many how long you keep it attached. You ain't no damn man. As long as you bleed and you gotta throw a tampon in there, stop it. I don't care how how much of a ball face you got and how crispy your damn Tims are. I don't give a damn how much you crease your jeans and sag your pants and and wear the Under Armour's under it. I don't care how, how tight you put the sports bra to where you look like you got pe uh, pectoral muscles. I don't give a damn. As long as you bleed monthly, as long as the Most High created you with that vagina and you can give birth to a, to a life, stop it. You're a woman. I don't care how manly you think you roll around. I don't care if you as strong as Ronda Rousey times 50. I don't give a damn. You don't belong in them front lines. Go cook, go clean, go build your house, go take care of the children, be a pillar of rest for your man. I don't care how, how much of a man you think you are or how much you, you make equal pay as the men at your job. We don't care about that. What does the Most High say? Let's jump to the next point. Homo homosexuality and prostitution. Real quick, Deuteronomy 23 and 17. I'm just hitting these, these points. There's many others, but I'm hitting the ones that we know the scriptures plainly talk about. Deuteronomy 23, 17. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Go ahead. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So when you go to spots like Nevada, when they got the, the legal bunny ranch, right? It's, it tells us right here, there should be no whore. But you go to Nevada, you got the bunny ranch. But then when you go to Cali, you get arrested for prostitution. You get arrested for this. You get arrested for that. You you, you mess up on this and that right here and pull over to the wrong chick, they're going to arrest you. Because prostitution should be illegal. 
But they, but think about it. We know it's illegal, right? In America, everywhere. But we know it's legal. They let that happen. You know them chicks is out there honing themselves. They know it. But what are the cops out there doing? They out there getting a little something, a little bribe here and there. Let me get you a little payoff. I won't arrest you if you do me a favor, right? They know. They know what's going on. We know what's going on. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 10, verse 3. Oh, finish that. Yeah, go ahead. Nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And we know the homosexuality. That's law according to the Most High. Now, now you get to see what you vote for when you, when you, when you want to deal with this, this wicked nation. Go to Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 3. What were you going to say? I was going to say that they got uh, robot sex brothels now. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. So you the whole go. brothel? Yeah, for, yeah, so they just got dirty machines servicing guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, they got them nice. in uh, Korea, China. Oh, the sex dolls. Yeah, the sex dolls. Oh, they're gonna come. But they, too. but they got brothels. Got it. What? Yeah. What is a brothel? A brothel's a house. Yeah, a house of none but oh. house of whores. House of whole sex dolls. Yeah, <laughs> dirty <laughs> sex dolls. Where you're just having sex with another man. Barbie dolls. Uh, Who's cleaning those? Uh, anyway. That's disgusting. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 3. That's disgusting. You got to watch it. <laughs> they, they frame mischief by law. Yeah. Your brother come talk about, well, is it unlawful? Oh, yeah. That's why we have to do the whole sex law class because you have, listen, you have it's Israelites. Unlawful. You have, like, it's not It's not a heathen. I, I got a dark, I got a, I got I got a dark, dark one? sex she's, 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 she's this a car. Dark. I picked her nationality. Yeah. She's like, this a car. See, see, this is where this is. I'm telling y'all, if y'all heads ain't on y'all shoulders, you No, you have brothers online asking that. Like, well, is it is it unlawful to have a sex doll? Brothers. They, was they, they, this. They, it, that's like that like they throwing us for a loop. Like they got us now. Like yeah, when they I, ask that, like, watch, I'm gonna catch them. Yeah. Let's see how spiritual they are now. Like they, you were sick. That's off. You're sick. Yeah. But again, through craft. Through their policies, they let craft, witchcraft. Well, she don't talk back and she's humble. Well, she don't do a lot of things. <laughs> she's, she's meek. <laughs> she's meek. <laughs> she's always there. She's my pillar of rest, brother. Ecclesiasticus, 10 verse 3. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10 and verse 3. Go ahead. An unwise king destroys his people. An unwise king does what? Destroys his people. He does what? Destroys his people. When you vote for Trump or any Democrat or Republican, you're doing what? Destroys his people. Go ahead. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Read verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. We always got to remember this. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Most High, but the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. We know that. Satan's time is short, right? Uh -huh. Go ahead. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. Who is that one? It's Yahweh Shai. Everybody, listen, the Most High is allowing Trump, Bush, Reagans, he's a, the, the, the Clinton B. Johnsons. He's allowing these people to, to take the, the, the reins. Because why? It's their time. But he said in due time, he'll send one that's profitable. I want to show y'all something. Y'all's vote for you that still don't believe that uh, voting is that the black man should vote, the Israelite man should vote. Your vote never even counted. Go to Psalms two and two. Your vote don't even count. If you voting for a president, if you're not part of the electoral college, shut your mouth. Your vote don't count. But let's deal with the spirit. Read that Psalms two and two. So chapter two and verse two. Uh huh. Why do the heathen rage? Uh, Psalms 2 and 2. That's Psalms one. chapter 2 and verse 2. Go ahead. The kings of the earth set themselves. They do what? Set themselves. Right from the top. The kings of the earth. They do what? The kings of the earth. Come on. Set themselves. The kings of the earth set themselves up. They pick who's going to be in power. You think you do it? You think you're voting? Oh, I'm voting for the next black judge. I'm voting for the Supreme Court judges. Man, you didn't vote for them. They already knew who they were going to pick. You voting when you are oh, Secretary of State, and I'm voting for this guy, and I'm voting for my next government, lower level government. We the people, for the people. No, you mean 
them, the people, for themselves. They know what the hell they were doing when they voted in Obama. It was a Ponzi scheme. It was they bamboozled you. Like, yeah, I got somebody in the office that looks like me, dog. He looks like us. Yeah, they hit you with a TD Jakes. They hit you with a they hit you with a with a pastor. That's Obama was a damn preacher. Bro, he spoke so good. He was a good listen, I used to listen to Obama talk and just get mesmerized. <laughs> I remember when he was the governor of Chicago and they had him at the DNC uh, four years before he got elected. He was talking, he was, you know, bigger head than he had, and he was skinnier, less gray hairs, and he was talking, and I was like, damn, the way he wags that finger, man. The way he, the way he, and, 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 and yeah, they do, yeah, they, yeah. And he, he would do a lot of this, and I'm like, damn, this dude is dope. Because he know how to talk, but he, he's on point with it. He, I'm like, damn, who taught this guy? He might as well went to theology school, because he sounded just like a TV Jake's. He sounded just like a Creflo dollar. He came with them smooth words. Mm. He came with them words of, yes, we can. Mm. Change the world. Mm. Change will come. Change will come. And I, I, I partly believe it. Yes, we can. I partly was like, damn, go Obama. <laughs> right? I don't want McCain. I don't want McCain. But we got to remember. Read it one more time. God, the kings of the earth set themselves. And the rulers take counsel together. Uh huh. Why? Read. Against the Lord. Against who? Against the Lord. When they picked Obama, they were what? Against the Lord. When they picked Trump, they what? Against the Lord. When you vote for your judges and your governors, you're what? Against the Lord. Read on. And against his anointed. Why? The whole point is to go against us. Good. Everything they elect is to go against us. Psalms 83. We don't got to go there. But it's all to fulfill Psalms 83. <laughs> Go ahead, I know it's heat. No, just uh, Isaiah 30, verse I know it's 1 and 2. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yep, basic. Uh -huh. Basic, but nice. But y'all see that the whole yeah. point is to what? Go against the Lord the, and go against the anointed. Go ahead, Psalms. Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30, yeah. verse 1 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Woe to the rebellious children, right. said the Lord, that take counsel. But not of me. And that's why with Israel, it's always woe. It's always destruction. Why? Because no matter how, what, you know, we, we were so-called free to slaves mm -hmm. all the way till now, you still didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Society, this kingdom, the morality of this beast has not changed what you doing in his way. Go ahead. But not unto me. Uh -huh. But not of me. Yeah, you don't want to counsel or get advice from the most high. You want to get advice from your governor, your politician, right? Your local legislator? Yeah. They'll, those are the ones that understand. The most I don't understand. And the leaders of the most I don't understand. But they get it, right? Hold on. They get it. Ooh, they, right? yeah, they, they get it. <laughs> yeah, you got to hit them with that. Oh, my God, it's an art. <laughs> Go ahead. And that say cover uh -huh. with a covering, right? but not of my spirit. Yeah, and that's the problem, that we've always tried to cover like he was going over. If you got the beginning of the class, it was, no, we, we want a king like the nations. Mm -hmm. We want a covering, but it ain't you, Yahweh. It ain't your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and your laws. It's going to be our king that we choose. Go ahead. Of my spirit. Uh-huh. That they may add sin to sin. Yeah, because they frame mischief by law, right, and add sin unto sin, right? Just when you think you're doing something right in the side eyes of the Most High, the white man circumvented that and put a law out to corrupt the laws of the Most High, the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 2. Uh-huh. That walk to go down into Egypt. And they go right back to America. You know, that's why bro brothers don't want to leave the mentality of this kingdom. Cool. They don't want to leave the mind state of this kingdom. It's comfortable. You, you talk about come, get out of America. Why not get out of the mind state? Why? Because you can't do it. You can't do it because you trust in America so much. You trust in the ideas, the beliefs, the system. Me and my real was just talking about that. Like, 
You know, because she was talking about going back to school, which is nothing wrong with that, going back to school. Nope. But she was saying that, you know what? We got the, uh, I've been talking to my cousin, we're gonna set this up and, and do this way to where we're, they wanna sell a program to, uh, to show you how to write books. Her auntie is all about it. But that's how America got rich, right? Yeah, yeah. They, you know, when you look at all the, the ones that gained their riches, mm -hmm. You know, what about the uh, Mark Zuckerbergs? Did he go to college? Nope. Uh, when did, when Bill did, Gates. Yeah, no. Bill Gates. Drop but off. but they tell us what? You got to go to school. You got to go to school and you got to get an education. Education. Right? And if you don't do it that way, you're not doing it right. You're not qualified. Right? If you're not covering with what we want you to cover with, right? you're going to be naked out there. And we believe it, but all of their people that have got rich, they're, they're they, idiots. I mean, look at... Look at Bush. Well, forget about this Bush. This nigga became Trump. president. Look yes. at Trump. He became president. I don't think Trump with the Trump ain't going to college. Now, so I can see why Akon said I'm running for president next year. Why? Because if this idiot can do it, sure, surely I can. They cover with the covering, but not of me. Go ahead. Verse two. Uh huh. That walk to go down into Egypt. Read. And then have not asked at my mouth. Read. To strengthen themselves in the strength. Of Pharaoh. Yeah, and that's why they believe in this dream. They believe in the American dream, man. You look at police officers, the ones that join the military, they believe in the dream. And they look at you with that conviction in their eye, with that dedication and love in their spirit of America, and, and there's no turning them away. That's why to pull them out of the matrix, what happens? What happens when we pull them out of the matrix? They shake. They shiver, they dance, they scream. They're like, no, nah, I can't believe it. Why? Because they love this lie. Go ahead. A pharaoh uh -huh. and the trust in the shadow of Egypt. Yeah, you, they trust in the shadow of Egypt. Like th this class right here will go over all of our people. Well, you, it's something uh, I was just watching the Equalizer yesterday, the Equalizer 2. Mm. And Denzel grabbed the young black man and said, what? Don't you. Don't you come with that. You can't do it. Or, or the white man's the problem. Hell yeah, the white man's always been the problem. That's not just the same. That's not like, you know, you know what? Uh, it's something psychological. It's happening. He pulls you out the car and blows your damn brains out. What else is him stopping you? Right? He's always stopped you. He stopped you with his laws, with his education, with, with his policies. Right? He stopped you in every way, but as soon as you start believing the lie that he's not trying to stop you, that he's your buddy, is when you buy into the system and you're right back in the matrix. That's it on that. Can I get a piece? Yeah. Jeremiah 2.25. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 2.25. Jeremiah chapter 2. Oh, go ahead. Hey, man, don't wait. Come. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 25. Uh, read. Withhold thy foot from being... Und unshod, unshod, uncovered. Go ahead. And thy throat from thirst. Read. But thou said, read. There is no hope. This is the problem with our people. We we looked at the Most High and said there's no hope. Go ahead. But we looked at Obama and said there's all the hope. Yes, we can. Go ahead. No. For I have loved strangers. We we did what? Love strangers. Israel loves what? Stranger. Come on. And after them will I go. Read. As a thief is ashamed uh -huh. when he is found. Go ahead. So is the house of Israel ashamed. Yeah, the most high gonna pull that skirt up. He's gonna put you to shame. Just like a thief when he's found, man. That's how Israel gets when we get found out, when we get exposed because of our 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 envy towards these nations and wanting to follow them. We envy these nations to the fault of we'll follow all their ways, and when they don't work out, when we end up catching AIDS and we think we could be the playboy. We think we could be the Hugh Hefner, and then what happens? Bill Cosby ended up in jail. You thought he was the black Hugh Hefner, but now you're ashamed. Go ahead. Don't highlight. Read. God, as a thief is ashamed when he is found, uh -huh. so is the house of Israel ashamed. Read. They, their king. Their what? Their king. Their what? Their king. Come on. Their princes. Come on. Their priests. Read. And their prophets. Read. Saying to, to a stop. Uh-huh. Thou art my father. Come on. <laughs> and to, to a stone. Thou hast brought before. You see how we are? God. 
we'll talk to stones and say, ah, you begot me. These idols. We'll, we'll give those things more reverence and credence than the Most High who begotten us. We forsake, we forsook the, the Most High who begot us, and we look at what? Christianity, Islam, our mama. We look at our politics. Man, if it wasn't for Obama, we, I don't know how we get here. If it, if it wasn't for this, I don't know, man, if it wasn't for Clinton, man, the black man would, you know, he raised the minimum wage. Like what, five cent? Mm -hmm. What, because of Obama we had jobs? But that's the thinking, like man, when we had, when we, no, when we had Clinton, the, the, that unemployment rate was at 0 0.1. It was the best unemployment rate ever. It, it ain't got nothing to do with Obama. We give too much power to these people and not to the most high. Go ahead, read on. But they have turned their back unto me. Read. And not their faith. Uh-huh. But in the time of their trouble. But then when you get in trouble, just like when you, your sons are shot in the street, you voted, you voted for that police captain. Now he out there gunning down your son. You voted for that elected official. Now he out there judging your son to throw his ass in jail. You talking about, oh God, why? Read. They will say, arise. Uh-huh. Save us. Do what? Save us. Read. But where are thy God? Right? The no. most I said, he'll laugh at your calamities. Time. He said, where are your gods? Question mark. Read. That thou has made thee. Right? Let them arise. Yeah, let that stone save you. <laughs> let your politician save you. The same one you voted for, let him save you. Mm -hmm. The same ca police captain that you voted in. That got the that got the uh the hit out on all black men. The same one you voted for. Because his last name was Martinez. Or Iglesias or whatever the hell. You thought that he was down? You voted for him, now he got the decree. He got the he got the 10 4 on all black males with hoodies on. Damn. You got a beard and you walk into a certain hood, lock him up, search and fritz. Oh, stop and fritz. Punch him in the kidneys, all that. Y'all see it? But y'all vote for that. And then you talking about God, why? They, Lord, save us? Let your let the same one you vote for, let him be your savior. That's what the most high is saying. Good. Read on. If they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. Right. For according to the number of the of the cities are thy gods, O Judah. Right. So y'all get that point, right? right? I mean, I got yeah, a little bit more. It's not a lot. Y'all can just for for your notes. Y'all can just throw in there, um, you know, the law about when we voted for our king or when we had our king. It had to be the king of our brethren. You can put it in Deuteronomy 17. That whole chapter goes in about that. Uh, Deuteronomy 17. You can, you can throw in Jeremiah 30 and verse 18 to 21. Um, yeah, we talked about it. The, the wicked, they changed the law. Isaiah 24 and 5. Daniel 7, 25, Ecclesiastes 10 and 1 through 2. Uh, and let's not forget Proverbs 29 and verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. You know, it's all these things, man. So, uh, is there any questions? Any questions on the topic? Uh, uh. Oh, what was that? The most I didn't say nothing about that one as sex though. <laughs> right, he didn't. Well, from bad to what was the question? I think someone asked after you went over this, um, can we get Israel into office? Well, what's the point? What's the point of having Israel? We, it, we, we, yeah, we did touch on that. It's, it wouldn't work. Because as soon as they found you out, they, they'd blackball you and execute you. They, 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 it would be a it would be a headline on all Israel. Black black nationalist movement. Right, infiltrate infiltrates the government, or or tries to infiltrate the government with a bomb strapped to his back, it make up some damn lie. So it, it just wouldn't be no point, man. It, it wouldn't be profitable. Remember, it says, "Come out of her, my people." Not dive further into her, not be more a part of her. Think about how much you have to go through this to be just to blend in with that type of society. Think about how much you give now to blend in with that society on a lower level. So now the, that that whole road scholar level, it, it, it's not gonna. You can't change that much one person. Right. So. Nah. 
Anything else? Uh, Jeremiah, you had your hand? Good, sir. So, like, when it's talking about uh, for us to come out of her, we know we're coming up. We, we already coming out mentally, right? Right. And we know that the, uh, the wilderness that it's talking about that we're going to have to go to, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's hidden. So. You said it's what? It's hidden. Okay. Right, so. When, when, when do we start uh, preparing or when do we know when we're going to start heading to the wilderness? You said like what? how are we gonna like head to the wilderness? You talking about how we're gonna be delivered? The, the scripture said yeah. he shall bring you. When you go back to that scripture, yeah. it says he shall bring you into that the wilderness. That he is Yahweh Shai. Right, right. But but I'm saying, ain't we gonna go into that before he come? Like into the wilderness before he come? No. No, that's after. Remember, watch, go there. Go to the scripture because it tells you it it goes into it. Somebody grab that for me. Where's that like around? So, somebody grab me that scripture. What? I was sitting up there before. Grabbing the scripture. Come. Come. Mm -hmm. Get that. <laughs> Let's go to Ezekiel. Get that. Uh, what is it, 20? Yeah. Yeah, 20 and 35. Go to 20 and uh, read up. Start at 12. <laughs> Get you right there. 20. We start at 33. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 30, 33. Right. As I live, said the Lord God, uh -huh. surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm right. and with, with fury poured out will I rule over you. Right. So. It's starting out showing us that this is coming to the ruling of Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. And I will bring you out from and the people. Read, read, read it again. And I will bring you out from the people. What does that mean? Isaiah 11 and 11. I will bring you out of all these countries, right? North, south, east, west. I will bring you out. Remember, he's going to gather us, right? With the last trump, right? The chariots are going to come. The angels are going to come. They're going to get us from all these different lands. Accept us. Right? Some of us, we're going to come over on ships. Right? Isaiah 60. Go ahead. And Right. I, I, Amos 99. I will sift you. Go ahead. And we'll gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. Right. So that key point there is I will bring you out from among the people. And I will gather you out of the countries. Go ahead. With a mighty or, hand. And, and we'll gather you. Go ahead. And with a stretched out arm. Go ahead. And with fury poured out. Right, because this is going to be in the time of fury. Yahweh Shai, as he's threshing and destroying the nations, this is how it's going to happen by them being destroyed. Go ahead. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. There you go. So when is this going to happen? Read 34 again. And I will bring you out from the people, uh -huh. from the people, uh -huh. and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. Right. With a mighty hand. With a what? With a mighty hand. That means that that is during the time, the sequence of that happening is when we're, when he comes back, Isaiah, uh, Revelations 19 and 11, you see that fourth dimension open up, and all the nations are warring and fighting against each, fighting against each other. Wars and rumors of wars. He's going to gather us out before that final destruction. Then he will go ahead. And with a stretched out arm. Uh -huh. And with fury poured out. Right. It, uh, what verse you at? 35. Right. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Go ahead. And there will I plead with you face to face. Right. So... You see, you see the sequence. It's, it's yeah, telling. I think you. I had asked the room because I know it's talk. It talk about like how, how the wilderness of the people, like how it is. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not this one. I'm gonna find that text later. But uh, and that's that's the reason I was asking that. I know he was gonna uh, bring us, but he said he was gonna he was gonna gather us before he put us in the nation. I know he's supposed to punish us first, right? No, it, no, no, no. The sequence is telling us right here. I, it's telling us right here how it's going to happen. You know, uh, 
that that class I went over about well actually <laughs> the Aria went over it again about the sequence of destruction and what's going to happen he went over it then also but the, the order of things how it's going to happen is the trump is going to blow Yahweh Shai is going to come right the angels and what are they going to do destroy right Joel 2 right they're going to destroy it. and as they're destroying this Babylon the great this great whore Revelations 18 the Most High is going to lift us out of this place before it's destroyed. Yeah, I had that question because you know how you talk about he was doing like a church, like first in church. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like we in church. That's what I was asking. Like, yeah, gonna be oh, what, 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 when it says, uh, then I will start at my sanctuary first. Right. You're talking about that one. Let's go there. Peter. Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think it is in Peter. Uh, uh, I don't want to. Misquoted, so let's get it. Oh, wait, no, I got it. Yeah, I got it. All right, go ahead. Uh, he says, uh, so, uh, First Peter 4 17. First, talk about that one. First Peter's four. Right. I'm getting sharp. I'm getting sharp in here. Uh-huh. Getting sharp. Studying. <laughs> reading the word of the Lord. Go ahead, read that. 417. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Uh-huh. For the time is come. Uh-huh. That right. judgment right. must begin at the house of Yahweh. Right. I like that. Perfect. So read up at verse 16. He's going to tell us. What context he's speaking about? Verse the 16. judgment. The judgment. When, when is that going to start for us? Go ahead. Verse sixteen. Uh huh. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, right? See, that's happening now. We're right now suffering, right? As believers, if we suffer as uh, suffer as believers in Christ, go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. Right. But let him glorify Yahweh. Right. On this behalf. Read. For the time has come. Right. For the time has come. Go ahead. That judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. How? How is that judgment beginning? It's us suffering right now. Going through the, the, the trials, tribulation, persecution, being tried in the fire. And it's going to reveal what you are. You're either going to suffer for Yahweh Shai, or it's going to be revealed that I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And if it first begin at us. Right. Well, how is it beginning? The, ju the, the, the judgment, the purging is now. What other scriptures go with this? Who's, who knows? What One more scripture. I just quoted it. Go to Zechariah to show you that the judgment is now. Before the actual fire comes, we're going through the spiritual fire because we know Yahweh Shai said we would be baptized with water and with fire, right? right. God. But we know what is that fire? Did any, Yahweh Shai light anybody up? Uh, or, it was the spirit, right? But what else was it? What was the fire? He said, I'm going to hit you with the fire and the Holy Ghost. He said, I need you to do the fire and the... So what was the fire part? What was the fire part? What? It's your trials. It's your trial. He right. says, I chose you in the furnace of adversity. Right? Mm -hmm. So read, what is it, Zechariah? Chapter 13. Go ahead. Verse 8. Scriptures. Go ahead. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass... That in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Right. But the third part, but the third shall be left therein. Right. So we know this is in, in the end. The third part is going to be destroyed, right? Got it. I mean, the third, the third, one third is going to be saved, two thirds is going to be destroyed. Go ahead. Verse 9. Uh huh. And I will bring the third part through the fire. I will bring the third part through the fire. I'm going to be the, bring the one-third through the fire. So one-third is going to make it. But he starts to go into this a little deeper as we read down. Go ahead. 
and will refine them. And, as, and will do what? Refine them. As silver is refined. Go ahead. And will try them as gold is tried. Right. So where is the refining? Where are we being brought through right now? When he says I'm going to start in the sanctuary, in the multi sanctuary first, when is that happening? Now. It's happening right now. You're being brought through the fire now. And that fire, this fire is going to reveal if you're going to make it through the thermal fire. Go ahead, read on. They shall call on my name, uh -huh. and I will hear them. Go ahead. I will say, it is my people. Why? Because you made it through the fire. Go to, what is it? For First Peter 1 and 7. Yeah. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. that, the, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than the gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire. Right. So when, how is he starting at the sanctuary of the Most High first? You're going through trials, tribulations, persecutions. You're going through all those things that Yahweh Shai went through. And it's going to try you of what manner of man you are. Whether you're gold, right? Silver, silver, silver. right? Clay, stubble. And if you get burnt up, you're going to do what? What's going to happen if you fall victim to your trial? What? Uh, you're pretty much, I, I don't want to say you're going to be a two-third, but it's, it's going to get Before that, out. You're, what do you, well, come out of it real quick and deal with your experience. What happens when you fall to your trial? What do you end up doing? Oh, you go back. You get the dog that you goes took back the to word, his You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh. You, uh, Cursed be he that put his hand to the plow and look it back. So that trial starts when you, that fire, that the, the Most High purging us starts with your trial. Yeah. So, but you tell them the same thing as, as a man looking, a man falling and a man looking back at the same thing? Because, you know, how can I say it? Like, the one who looking back is, is the one who, who want to just go back, right? But the one who, who actually falls, you know, unless he just follows a mission, he still got a, a chance to. Oh, I know, agree right, with you. Right? I, I didn't, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say. You did. Oh, okay. Right. The way it was yeah, made, like it's like you put on the same on, on the same way. Well, the only true determination, we're jumping subjects, by the way, y'all. Uh, the only true determination to determine if uh, that person is totally drawn back, we can't determine that. So when we drop the scripture, we got to drop it. Like, for instance, since you brought that up, when the Bible says uh, they went out from among us because they were not of us. Right. But if that they'd been with us, they would have continued. Right. What, what is the de spiritual determination of what that scripture? Is that getting specific or is that generalizing? They're generalizing. They're so, they didn't want, they didn't want the law. So right. They and, and that's that's what I'm doing with this scripture. That's what this scripture is doing. Uh, or us quoting, rather, we didn't even pull it. We quoted it about drawing back, right? Mm -hmm. When you draw back, does it get specific on it says, well, that man that draw back, does it jump to the other scripture that says, uh, a, a, a just man fall seven times? No, you got to put them together. So you don't know. If he drew back to destruction all the way, right? Just like you don't know them that when they leave, if they're gonna come back, right? If they're gonna be the prodigal son. So I think we're in agreement with that. That not all the time somebody that falls is somebody that's gonna uh, leave off totally. Yes. Okay, I think it's just me personally. Yeah. I think when you fall, to like, I mean, I had a. Uh a time like that, that before I even knew I was an Israelite. Right. And I feel like, damn, like, I gotta get back here. Like, you realize that you, like, you feel because, you know, you, know, you start seeing things happen. I agree. Like, before when you, you just, like, totally in the spirit. I, I think we're, we're in agreement on that because a uh, just man falls seven times. Uh, and you quoted it. But rise back up. The wicked fall into mischief. So you're gonna know that individual Really, really, I you're you're not going to know. Right. Really, you're not going to know because what did the prodigal son do? He came back. 
Amen. No, he, but he, before that, he went into the dirt. He went into the mischief. He went into all that, but, but he woke up. But he woke up. He started, you know, that's, exactly. that's what I'm referring to. Like, when I yeah. was stuck going hit me, I was like, hey, how did I get back here? But like, now, when he was eating the slot, he was like, hold on, man. Like, I, my father's hurting me. But now, let me throw, throw you for a loop. And this is for everybody. Woe be he that put his hand to the plow and look back. Why is that scripture there then? Because they took. Oh, oh uh, go ahead. I was going to say because when you're here, like the scripture says. Because you can't. No, 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 stop, stop. Let me say this. Let me say this. Check this out. Because this is a good. We totally jumped off the original question, but this is a good point being made anyway, which is. If the scripture says, "Will be he that put his hand to the plow." So, could I say, you know what, you know what, I, uh, you can't judge me just because I left and I'm not doing the work no more. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm just a prodigal son. I had, we've had a brother that said that that you got to go to darkness to come back to the light, right? So the question is, why is that scripture there? I know we're talking about the other pendulum that not being able to judge, but <laughs> Why is that there then? Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's like, there's two scriptures that I can point to. Uh -huh. The one that says wisdom follow you through your crooked paths. Okay. So if you were to draw back, right? Okay. Say you put your hand to the plow and you look back and you went back. Wisdom is with you either way. So it's Wisdom like, is with who? No, no, no. I'm saying like you were doing the work, so you, you had wisdom. Okay. So it's like if you draw back and you're back out into the world, then it's like you got all this wisdom with you. So it's like it becomes a point where you start denying it. So when you once you start denying that wisdom, you're pretty much done. Mm -hmm. But like the wisdom is there when you draw back. So it's like eventually you're, you're like. Nah, so, but nah, but but then back. again, come, good point, and you're right. But who is able to determine? But the Most High within that individual, we got that right. Like like if you left out right. <laughs> I can come back and say, the scripture says, woe be he that put his hand to the plow and look back. Is that scripture still substantial and still supposed to be a root and a dagger in your brain? Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, of course. Right. For you not to do what? To go back. Right. Not for you not to go back. For you not to feel any of that woe. Right. So you, you, won't, be, you won't feel the destruction. Because I think brothers look at the woe as like you draw back and you're automatically zapped off the earth. No, there's many destructions. Right. And the, that woe is your own wickedness will correct you. There you go. I'll go out. I know that I shouldn't be sleeping with a bunch of women. I'm going to go do it. Now, I got a bunch of babies and I might have you, you, you can come back to the truth. You can come back. But you got woe. But you got that woe. followed you. Yeah. yeah. The age didn't just leave when you realized that, damn, that was all. <laughs> the, the babies that you got out there, they don't just like poof and disappear. Like go, like go back. Right. <laughs> Going back in you. Nah, they you realize that damn there was woe because I was consistent on the work, but I drew back to my own lust. The dog returned back to his vomit. You see what I'm saying? So what happens uh, when uh, how how can we determine this person is done, gone, out there? Right? How? How could you determine that? And say that that person's never gonna make it back. Well you can't. It, Right. Unless, unless they blaspheme against the Holy yeah. Spirit, right? Otherwise, see, this is why, and we talked about this before, you got to watch how you judge. And I always say it all the time, it's like, I learned there's brothers that left for many years and came back. There's sisters that left for many years and came back. You can't just say, oh, they left, that person's done. They're going to get woke. They're going to get checked. They're going to get corrected. But you can't judge and say, oh, they, they're not going to come back because you never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 is set in the, it, uh, it, Because the sentence is, is not, not executed speedily. speedily. Right. It's set in the, in the sons of men to do wickedly. So you can't determine because a person's out there and they fell off when, when they're going to get checked. Like, well, yeah. they, they left a week ago. They supposed to be getting I, hit. I uh, see I seen brothers leave. Nothing happened. They come back and those sins follow them. And, and, and it's like they come back and try to start doing what's right. And then next you know those sins are right there on their butt. Oh, remember this? You just did that last week. You want to act like it ain't there? 
You did that last money ain't there, it'll come back. But you know, I think I think we're going deeper in the conversation. Yeah, you can't you can't always judge all the time. But at the same time, that's it's still not giving place to the person that wants to put their hand to the plow and then say, you know what, I gotta go back out there. Let me start smoking blunts again. Let me start committing adultery again because you know why? Uh, you never know. I gotta maybe I'm the prodigal son. I know it sounds ignorant as hell, but you know there's people that think like that. And if you don't know, then you need to wake the hell up because people will use those scriptures to be like, well, you don't know, brother. You don't know if I'm chosen or not, which is true, but you're playing with the most high now. You're playing with the scriptures now. Yeah, well, I mean, was that it? I yeah. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, we're going to be here Wednesday. If Oh, dang, today, sorry, we, <laughs> traveling time, yeah. we will be here Friday, so we'll catch everybody online Friday, also, once again, just a reminder, everybody that's supposed to drop the vow, I know he said it earlier, uh, for y'all that actually are on there, online now, drop the vow for the school, and we appreciate that, once again, alright, so everybody salute them, say shalom, shalom, we'll see y'all on the Shabbat, alright. Hey, you guys wait to class Jesus in, right? is real, but you devils taught lies on Christ. So many lies that when we come with the truth, people think that the lies is the truth and that the truth is the lie. Who changed the truth for God into a lie? In English, Jesus Christ in Hebrew was Yahweh Shah. To do what that do, you not to make deception and deception. Come with the truth, people think that